Okay, so lecture one three, sources. So we've talked about resistors, we've talked about having you know the laws apply to circuits, KVL, KCL, Ohm's law applying to resistors. We talked about voltage dividers, which is a sort of simple circuit. And now we're talking about sources, because circuits are way better when you have power coming in, um, it turns out. So that's, that's what we've got here. So sources, also known as supplies, supply power to a circuit. There are two primary types, voltage sources and current sources. Ideal voltage sources. An ideal voltage source provides exactly the voltage a user specifies, independent of the circuit to which it is connected. All it must do in order to achieve this is to supply whatever current is necessary to make that voltage happen. Let's unpack that with a simple example. So I, it sounds a little bit unrealistic, right? Um, it has to provide you know, exactly the voltage the user specifies, no matter how it's connected up and no matter how much current it needs to supply. We're already going to be suspicious of this because we know that the product of voltage and current is power, right? And if we're going to be able to supply any current to it, you're, you're talking, you know, maybe infinite current is required to have that voltage and maybe infinite power is required and we know that's not going to happen because our laptop battery is always dying and power is never infinite. It's always, always running in short supply, right? So, limitations of a voltage source is this example. In the circuit shown, so it's just a simple voltage source, an ideal voltage source connected to a resistor, okay? So in the circuit shown, determine how much current and power the ideal voltage source Vs must provide in order to maintain voltage, so whatever it's specified to be, Vs, if the resistance R goes to infinity and alternatively if the resistance goes to zero. So these are like the two limits, right? So either it can be connected to something with very high resistance, infinite resistance, uh, or it can be connected to something with very, very low resistance. What would a very, very low resistance be? A wire. So if this was just connected to a wire, what is that called? A short, a short circuit, right? A short circuit is what happens if we just connect the two ends, the two terminals together by a wire. The short circuit. Um, we call, alternatively, if you have infinite resistance in between the two terminals, we call that an open circuit. Okay. Right. So in, in, the, in the limit, there's zero current flowing. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's unpack this. So we know what the voltage is across R. It's, it's going to be Vs. Has to be, right? We could do a little KVL loop, which would say Vs minus Vr equals zero, so Vs equals Vr, right? So we know that Vs equals Vr. So Vr equals uh, Vs. Whatever that is, maybe 12 volts or 5 volts or AC or whatever it is. Um, so Vr is equal to Vs. Uh, we also know that Ohm's law applies to this resistor, right? So we know that IR is equal to VR over R. And VR, we just decided, was VS, right? So VS over R. So the power dissipated by the resistor, we know is the product of its voltage and its current, right? So we have both of those now. So it's Vs times Vs, so Vs squared over R. Now, 
let's take our two limits. So the open circuit limit is when r goes to infinity. So open circuit limit r goes to infinity. What happens to the power? So power approaches 0, right? Because Vs squared divided by infinity is going to go to 0, assuming you have a finite Vs, which we do assume. <laughs> so uh, good. Um, also, notice that as r goes to infinity, ir goes to 0 too, right? So ir also goes to 0. In other words, the resistor is not going to dissipate any power when the resistance is infinite. And it's also not going to flow any current. So like nothing's happening. It's an open circuit, right? No, nothing's flowing. You have a voltage source that's just chilling. It's not really doing anything for you probably, but hey, at least you didn't have to give any power either. So that's, that's nice. Yeah, it's just open, exactly. So a light switch ideally, when it's open, has infinite resistance. Good. Uh, and Alternatively, short circuit, so R goes to zero, what happens? If R goes to zero in this expression, the, the power that, it, that the resistor dissipates is infinite. And what about the current? Current also goes to infinity. So this isn't super realistic, right? Because we know we can't supply infinite power. So something's got to give. And that's actually, um, we'll talk about how to model a real source at the end of this lecture. Um, but let's talk about ideal current sources first. So like, there's something fishy, right? There's something that says, oh, okay, it's ideal, but it's also unrealistic to say that it's just going to supply whatever voltage um, you prescribe, no matter what you connect it to. Connect it, if you just short it, no voltage source is going to be able to maintain a voltage, a non-zero voltage across a wire. Um, because that wire is constantly just flowing that current, so you have a potential and it's constantly being wiped away. So, Ideal current sources, there's, there's a sort of dual relationship here that's important to notice. So um, uh, ideal current sources provide exactly the current a user specifies, independent of the circuit to which it is connected. So it's the opposite of an ideal voltage source. It supplies whatever current, regardless of what it's connected to. All it must do in order to achieve this is to supply whatever voltage is necessary to make that current flow. Let's also unpack that. We're suspicious that we can do this again because it sounds, it sounds like a problem. In the circuit, determine how much voltage and power um, the ideal current source, IS, uh, must provide in order to maintain a voltage if R goes to zero, so if we sh uh, short it, and if R goes to infinity, which is if we leave it open. Okay, so. So, um, let's start out with saying that the Ohm's law is going to apply to this resistor again, right? VR equals IR times R. So, no surprises there. That subscript's getting a little big. Okay, VR equals IR times R. And if we looked at KCL at this node, what would we 
discover about the relationship between this current source current IS and the current in the resistor I, uh, uh, resistor R. They're the same. So IR equals IS. Okay. So we now have two equations here and we know that they both go into the power equation, right? So VR VR times IR and um, we have uh, IR is equal to IS, IR is equal to IS so we have I S squared R, right? Good, so let's take the short circuit limit, short circuit. So uh, R goes to zero. And is this gonna be easy or hard for the current to flow when R is zero. It's going to be easy. So it actually doesn't have to supply any power in the limit. So if R goes to zero in this equation, PR goes to, I'll say goes to, goes to zero. So it requires no power to flow current through a perfect wire, which makes sense. That's kind of what wires are made for, so it's good. We have uh, confirmed that wires are good for flowing current in this, so that's great. Uh, IR is going to approach what? It's going to be IS, right? And but what is VR? Zero. There's no voltage drop across it. It's just going to flow. Current's just going to flow. Okay. Great. And now I think we can just use the same page. So uh, open circuit. R goes to infinity. So we've got our power is it also going to go to infinity, right? And VR is going to go to infinity as well. So what's happening here? As R becomes infinite, we're opening up the circuit. We're saying there's, we're putting maybe first off like a like a an insulator in there so it's not a wire anymore now it's an insulator it's hard to flow current through it so we've got to supply more power you got to supply more voltage to make that to drive that current through okay and then you replace that insulator with a huge air gap okay and very little if any current is going to really make it through right unless you increase that voltage more and more and more and more and that power more and more and more and then actually it would like arc in real life across the air gap. Uh, but then if you add a vacuum, right, if you just like start to increase the distance and, and uh, between those two, that's the, the R going to infinity. It's, it's impossible to connect these two ends to flow any current through them. Uh, in order to make that current flow, you would have to supply infinite power and explode the universe. So, yeah. <laughs> So that's the idea uh, uh, of these, of these uh, ideal current and voltage sources. And, and now I'll just end with this note here on modeling real sources. So no real source can provide infinite power. Some have feedback that controls the output within some finite power range. These types of sources can be approximated as ideal when operating within their specs. Okay, so certain power requirements especially are the, the specs also temperatures and whatnot. Uh, many voltage sources, for example, batteries, don't have internal feedback control of the voltage. 
When these sources are loaded, which means they're delivering power to a circuit, they cannot maintain their nominal output voltage. Uh, so, if, especially if it's a, a battery, it would be a voltage. It can't maintain its, its, uh, its nominal voltage. Uh, if it's a current source, it can't maintain its nominal current. We model these types of sources as ideal sources in series or parallel with the resistor as illustrated in the figure. So, real voltage sources more accurately are reflected with this model, and real current sources are more accurately modeled with this. And you can, you can show that power is limited when you have non-zero resistance in series with the voltage source and non-zero resi resistance in parallel with the current source. It's not always a perfect model of a real source, but it's not bad. Um, so a lot of like uh, benchtop uh, voltage sources are ones that are, are power sources, supplies that you buy for putting into your machines. Uh, they have a, a nominal output voltage that comes in the, ma in the manual. Like you can read it and it'll be like 50 ohms is common. Um, there are other standards, 75 ohms or whatnot. So the output voltage, uh, the output um, resistance um, is, is a rating um, that you'll see in a lot of power supplies. For batteries, depending on the battery, you have to come up with a, uh, uh, a uh, an approximation for what is its nominal output resistance is. So whenever you model something with a battery in it, a circuit with a battery in it, don't forget that. Don't forget to put in this nominal resistance or this, this output resistance um, in your model. Otherwise, it won't be realistic. Okay. That's it. Thanks for your patience.